Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the use of um, current mirrors as active loads. Uh, basically, what that means is using the current mirror um, as a load to an amplifier. I have drawn a little example here with the common emitter amplifier, where I have used a current mirror um, as a, an active load to the amplifier. Um, and this provides two advantages to the amplifier. Number one, it provides the biasing for the circuit, uh, which as we have seen in integrated circuits, it's a preferable biasing structure over something like the four resistor biasing network, as well as it allows uh, the amplifier to have a very large gain. And the reason for that um, is because this basically is gonna replace, if you look at the common emitter amplifier, what the current uh, uh, mirror or the current source is replacing is the collector resistor. Um, now the resistance looking into the, at the collector of transistor Q0, uh, which is basically the common emitter amplifier, instead of being RC, is now uh, the output resistance, internal output resistance, little RO of transistor Q2. And because those internal output resistances tend to have very large values, uh, the gain of this common emitter amplifier is going to be uh, potentially very large. I have drawn the uh, small signal equivalent circuit. On the side, notice the coupling capacitor has disappeared uh, because it behaves as a short uh, in the small signal equivalent circuit. And I have represented, um, in essence, the, uh, the circuitry that is within the orange square on the left-hand side also on the right hand side there, which is comprised of the transistor uh, Q sub naught, which forms the common emitter amplifier, as well as the load resistance. And then uh, connected in parallel with the load resistance will be uh, resistors little RO2, which will be the output resistance looking into the collector of transistor Q2. So that will be the small signal equivalent circuit. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the expression for the gain of this circuit. Again, it is a common emitter amplifier, and so the expression for the voltage gain is going to be uh, negative, because it is an inverting amplifier. And then the ratio of the resistance connected to the collector of the transistor divided by the resistance connected to the emitter terminal. Now the resistance connected to the collector in this particular circuit is going to be um, little rho 2, the collector resistor, um, which is basically now being replaced by the resistance looking into the collector of Q2, uh, in parallel with the output resistance little rho of transistor uh, Q0, so little rho sub 0, and in this case, in parallel with our load, if we are considering the effect of our load. And the resistance connected to the emitter, in this case, is going to be little re sub naught. Now, we can express this as follows. We know that 1 over little re is equal to the transconductance of the transistor. So, negative em sub naught times... And now for the parallel combination, we know that 1 over the equivalent resistance of um, several resistors in parallel is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus 1 over the third resistor and so forth. Um, and so that will be 1 over the parallel combination of resistances. Since here we just have the parallel combination of resistances, we can express that as 1 divided by 1 over little r02 plus 1 over little RO0 plus 1 over RL, where I have simply applied uh, the equation of the equivalent resistance of a parallel combination of resistors. Now, uh, notice that my expression for gain is being written in terms of the small signal parameters, GM, little RO, etc. And I can calculate those in terms of uh, my DC collector current. So, for example, little RO sub 2 will be equal to the early voltage divided by the collector current in transistor Q2, IC2. Now notice that some of these transistors are PMP transistors and some of them are MPN transistors. 
um, they don't necessarily have the same early voltage. Um, typically, if we are using all the same types of PMP transistors, all of them will have the same early voltage amongst themselves. Uh, but the MPN transistors may have a different voltage from the PMPs. And so I'm going to refer to the early voltage for my MPNs as VAN and the early voltage for my PMPs as VA sub P. And so this will be early voltage MPN and PMP. And so in that case, I will have to write my uh, little arrow 2 as VAP divided by the collector current in transistor um, Q2 IC2. My little arrow uh, for transistor Q0 is going to be equal to the early voltage in this case for an MPN transistor divided by IC sub naught. Now notice that IC sub naught is going to be equal to IC2, so I'm going to already write them as the same uh, collector current. Uh, little uh, RE sub naught is also related to IC, and so I can write EM sub naught, which is equal to 1 over little RE sub naught, is equal to IC sub naught, which is again equal to IC2, uh, divided by the thermal voltage. And I'm going to make a note here saying, note that. IC sub naught is equal to IC2. Alright, so with this I can rewrite my expression for voltage gain, which is equal to negative. And then in the numerator I have a GM sub naught, which I have calculated as IC2 divided by VT. And in the denominator I will have IC2 divided by VAP plus IC2 divided by VAN uh, plus 1 over RL. Uh, so this will be the expression. You will have to you know, calculate um, actual values based on particular um, resistor values. But in the cases where uh, we ignore the value of the load resistance or we are uh, considering the open circuit case. So in the case where RL goes to infinity, meaning uh, load disconnected, or an open circuit type of um, output, we will have the following for our AB expression. It will simply be IC2 over VT divided by IC2 over VAP plus IC2 over VAN. Now we can divide numerator and denominator by IC2 and end up with the following expression. Um, negative 1 over VT divided by 1 over VAP plus 1 over VAN. Now you can already see that this is going to give us a very large number. Um, because VT is a small number, and so 1 over VT is going to be a large number, and then VAP and VAN are going to be both uh, fairly large numbers, and so 1 over a large number is going to give us a small number. So we're going to end up with a large number in the numerator and a small number in the denominator. Uh, let's try to um, see some example values, just to look at some order of magnitude for some uh, common values for VT and VA. So for example, we're going to assume that uh, VAP is equal to 80 volts, VAN is 120 volts, and for the thermal voltage we'll assume 25 millivolts, so we're assuming basically room temperature. In that case, our voltage gain will be equal to negative 1 over 25 milli divided by 1 over 80 plus 1 over 120, um, which is equal to minus 1920. So we can see 
uh, much larger than the typical gain values that we are used to for collector resistors in the range of um, kilo ohms or tens of kilo ohms. Um, and so this is going to be uh, something that's going to be use, uh, useful when we are designing um, amplifier circuits in integrated circuits, but especially circuits such as an op-amp, uh, where we're trying to design a circuit with a very large gain. In that case, we're going to be using uh, active loads because, again, they allow us to get very high gains without using very large collector resistors. Thank you.